Welcome to The Crick House. We are so glad that you can join us. We pray that today's episode inspires you, gives you hope, and that God speaks to you in amazing ways through it. So without further ado, welcome to our home. Hello and welcome back to The Crick House. Everybody is here with me at the table. Um, we have just finished recording um, something very special, which we'll explain to you a little bit more about. But here we are. This is us. Around the table, Ari is now joining us. The dogs yeah. are around as well. And actually, we were, when we were just recording our Christmas production, um, we had so many interruptions. I think Oscar had one line and then the dog itched its ears and, and then, then he recorded sneezed. again. And then at the same point, he sneezed and then he went again. And at the same point again... He went to scratch at the door. So it kind of really segues really nicely into the theme for today, which is the title of our audio drama, which is called Relentless Legacies. I was going to go with um, Daft (laughs) for recording with dogs around. I was going to go with if I sit on this wooden stool any longer, my bum's going to (laughs) change. So for all our viewers under 18 years old. Any any one of those three topics we could be talking about (laughs) this afternoon. So let's start with the constantly changing shape of a buttocks. Um, (laughs) Let's not. Let's not. not. Anyway, so Relentless Legacy. That is the name of our Christmas show that we have coming up. Um, If you haven't heard about that yet, you can check on our website, www w.manatheatrecompany.uk click on christmas and you will see all the coming dates and times and locations for our shows we have three performances so far starting from the end of november right through into late december um so feel free to have a look they are all free to attend they are um in partnership with a couple different local churches um so bring yourself bring your friends along bring your family it will be a wonderful, wonderful time. It's, it's such a beautiful story that reminds us of truly the meaning behind Christmas, um, but goes into it a little, in a little bit of a different way, doesn't it? I think it is a reflection on the humanity of the people involved in the Christmas story. And very often we see Christmas and the meaning of it in a rose-tinted glasses way. Um, Mm. It's beautiful on our mantelpiece. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful on the cards that we receive through the post. Um, It's depicted beautifully in some films. And yet we forget that these were humans. Mm. Um, They were men. They were women. They were girls. They were people with lives that were interrupted by the call of God. We see in a very um, sterile way mm, would be a good mm, word for it. A very very holy, no problems here. Oh, they didn't find an inn. God happened to have a stable lined up for them. Um, You know, but there's a lot in between. There's a lot in between. There is a there is a massive lot in between, and I think something that the Lord has been showing us as a family, as we've been all digging into the Word, and we're all in different places in the Bible, but we're all sort of reading different chapters and just discussing the humanity of the people in the Bible. And something that I have loved and has really stuck with me was something Andrew Womack said was that when he's read a story from the Word, um, he then tries and puts himself in that person's position to imagine what that would have felt like to have that challenge or be asked of God to do this or being in that circumstance. And I think something that Relentless Legacies is about um, is really about putting ourselves in the positions of the different people Mm. and what that might have meant to them. So it is the Christmas story retold, but through the eyes of those that were there involved. Mm -hmm. um, And as I've written it, it's kind of been a really moving experience to to put myself in the feelings and the thoughts of those people. Um, So we're just going to introduce you to the different characters because this Christmas for the first time in 11 years, the cast is six people. Six people. Which is the six people that sit around this table. Um, <laughs> well, and, there's only four here at the moment. Well, the, the other two will be joining us in a minute. It hasn't. It wasn't an intended thing. It wasn't like a a plan thing that had been in our heads. We came back from tour on summer, mm. and we're thinking of doing some sort of Christmas recital or a night with Manor, where we would just sort of do some cheery Christmas things, some songs, some dance, some music, mm-hmm. um, and. 
when we spoke to the cast that are from all over the UK of their availability in the next few months, we just could not get everybody to marry up times and we could all be together. That's right. And it just felt that God was saying, this is something different this Christmas and asked us as a family if we would take on doing a production, which is just an hour long mm -hmm. called Relentless Legacies, mm -hmm. which is a rewrite of our production Relentless for a smaller cast. Yes, with a um, a hint to another musical that we called Legacies, although there isn't much of Legacies in it really, is there? But not, in, not in as but much it has as the same the, sort of theme. The, the, it, the theme with the Legacies is the fact that these people that are involved in the Christmas story that are often overlooked, you know, mm -hmm. we see Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus and stuff like that, but what about the others? What Legacies, what, uh, you know, life yeah. lessons can they give to us? Um, and it all started with us really listening to a, an amazing man of God called Rick Renner and if you haven't heard of him or you haven't um, listened to his Christmas mm. podcast it is an amazing they are on YouTube um, what's the title of them? Christmas, Christmas the, rest of the, story. the rest of the story it's the picture of Rick with a white side bit which shows the book and then it says like 19 episodes yes yeah, so they are on YouTube and I would really recommend it. it's been so enriching for our family every night to sit down and to be watching these together as a family and discussing them they just, it's, it's about 20 minutes long every night if you haven't listened to rick renner and the christmas episodes mm. be prepared that you may be throwing out your christmas cards it with will, the stable on it it will ruin your perspective to the short book nativity that deepen, we're so used but it to does deepen your your heart to the things of god yeah it does yeah. it's like we we watched it and now we can't write anything or watch anything that's very um perfectly packaged shop bought um christmas nativity in a barn with all the wise men there without question without well, well, well without <laughs> knowing yeah. because we've um, seen Rick back it all up with all these Jewish scholars like Josephus, all these Greek scholars and everything. And he was saying that the reason we think everything's so mushed up and it was all in one place, because in the olden days, people wanted to paint it, but they couldn't fit in everything. So they just merged everything onto one canvas so we could see everything. But now we've taken that as, oh, everything happened at the same time. So now, thanks to these artists who meant the best in the world, we now often get mixed signals. So I think with what with that, Ari, um, one of the greatest takeaways that we've had from listening to Rick was actually, although we love to look at the nativity in a beautiful barn mm. um, with straw and hay and, you know, this lovely wooden building and everything else, actually, the shocker was, he was Jesus born. was not born in a stable, no, but was born cave. in a cave. Do you want to explain what that is and where it is? And actually, you can actually still go and see it. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, I actually completely geeked out and read the entire book on this before we watched the TV program because um, I love biblical history. But when it comes down to where Jesus was born, just going to go on a bit of a, a historical spree here. So Bethlehem was surrounded... Oh, you um, see comfortably. <laughs> we'll be here for a minute or two. So Bethlehem was surrounded by fields and often in these fields would be the rabbinical shepherds. Um, and these were the shepherds... Oh, yeah. There's our cast member, the shepherd shouting from across the house. Um, and these shepherds weren't normal shepherds. These were specifically um, set in place by the Sanhedrin, by the temple and everything to look after and raise the lambs and the sheep that would be um, used for sacrifices at Passover and stuff. So um, the rabbinical shepherds had to make sure their lambs didn't get any spotted blemishes, damages or nothing. So they were there 24-7, seven days a week all 365 days of the year um, and they were there constantly but of course you have bad weather so they needed somewhere to stay surrounding Bethlehem are caves loads and loads of mountains and caves and we are told and their research shows that the shepherds would often take shelter in these caves in fact they were created for shepherds so they had um, like borrowed out stone what kind of feeding trough kind of things built into the stone walls where they could keep bandages and lay they, their they lambs and stuff. Rock, yeah, they were carved out of the rock um, where they could keep their lambs and stuff. And when it's talking about a census, it's not just oh, a few people moving from um, Surrey to the north. It's talking about the entire 
Roman country. So everywhere that's under Roman occupation was on the move. Schools shut down, workplaces, everything shut down and people flocked to the places of their birth. So when Joseph and Mary came to Bethlehem, their journey would have been slower than everyone going ahead of them because, of course, Mary's pregnant. It would have been harder, loads of rest stops. So they would have been coming in a bit later than all the others who could sort of, you know, get there quickly. So when they arrived, it wasn't that there was just no room and everyone was being, you know, a bit rude. There was literally no room. And if you think about it, a lot of the people in Bethlehem may not have originated from Bethlehem. So inns may have shut down so people could travel to their own homes as well. So there was literally no room anywhere in Bethlehem at all. So Mary and Joseph, as along with... Um, along with other travellers, had to stay in these caves. And these caves wouldn't have been silent. They wouldn't have been clean. They would have been dirty, full of straw, wet mud, hard rocks, other travellers. It would be noisy. It would have been crowded. There would have been animals everywhere. And the only space that Mary could have had some privacy would have been at the back of the cave with the animals. So Mary gave birth to Jesus in a crowded cave on the hard stone floor where there's straw, where there's mud, where there's dirt surrounded by animals probably trying to lick her bite her whatever rick renner also said that there may have been other people in the cave taking shelter before the census other shepherds and things so um that is definitely not a sheep under our table it sounds like (laughs) an angry wolf but it's just our little dog eddie but the fascination of the facts that we have learned um by watching these episodes has just deepened our understanding of christmas and so, yeah, so we've written Relentless Legacies out of deeper knowledge, um, but also out of trying to listen to the hearts of the humanity um, of these people, because we are spirit, soul and body when we get saved. You know, our spirits are totally redeemed and renewed and made right in Christ Jesus. But we still have to renew our minds and we still have to master our emotions and all of those things. And I think sometimes, as we said at the beginning, we see people through the Bible eyes as being perfect and not having these struggles. Or even when we do see their struggles, we forget that they may have got angry, they may have got emotional, they may have been depressed or fearful or sad. In fact, if you look at the writings of David in the Psalms, you can see so much of his emotion coming through. You can. And when we were listening to Rick talking about the Christmas things, one of the characters which came across, um, and you don't realise just by reading the Gospels, was Herod the Great. He wasn't called Herod the Great just because he was great. There was lots of other things he did. He was not so great. He was not so great, but they called him great. We will get back to the Crick House in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my family. We are full-time Christian workers. This means that we rely on the financial support of people like you to meet our daily living costs so that we can continue our work in the ministry, sharing the gospel wherever we go. You can support us by becoming one of our partners or buying one of our products available on our website. As a family and with a wider cast, we create audio dramas that are uplifting and support Christian morals that are suitable for the whole family. This isn't just limited to audio dramas, though. We also write novels, which are available as books on our website as well. So, to support our family and ultimately the work we do for the ministry, you can visit our website at www.manatheatrecompany.uk. Thank you so much for listening, and now back to the Crick House. Yeah, and definitely history and looking at the times and the seasons and the culture around that area at the time helps to fill in. So talking about why we've written Relentless, we're going to introduce you to each of the characters that we will be playing this Christmas. And maybe you could start your reply in your in your um, cast, in your character, if you like. And um, when we are doing this for drama, we call this what Oscar if we are being asked to play our part all the time. Oh, 
um method acting right absolutely yeah, method yeah. acting so this morning around our table we have been method acting we have all our podcast microphones out and we have been recording a audio drama version of relentless legacy so if you can't come and see one of the performances in the west midlands this christmas you will very soon be able to download for a cost from our website relentless legacies the audio drama which will be an hour long maybe that could be part of your christmas this year as a family in the car on your way to church one sunday afternoon one evening just getting the real focus onto what Christmas is about. And maybe that will raise some questions that you can share with your children and families to really find a depth in the understanding of what our amazing God did this at the Christmas story, but also what the people involved in did. And maybe you can even relate to the hearts of those people. So the story is narrated by our shepherd. That it is, yes. And our shepherd is played by our son, Oscar. Very old shepherd. I talk a bit different than I do normally. Um, I don't. What is my name? You don't have oh, one. We don't have well, a name. Well, Josephus. Josephus. Yeah, after the after the Jewish scholar. Okay, fine. Oh, yeah, the shepherd Sean. <laughs> Why Sean? Oh, I prefer Sean because of Sean the sheep. But that sounds too much like Joseph, surely. Okay, Mr. Elimelech. Shepherd Josephus. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your character? What he. What he portrays, his heart, his feelings, what have you learned through the character of the shepherd that you could relate to or you could understand and give you a deeper understanding of a relentless heart of that shepherd? Yeah, so... Um, uh, method acting. I want to do it all in, all in the shepherd. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so for this performance, um, it has been very interesting. Um, as the shepherd is a part I never really noticed much before, um, but doing the Rick Renner stories and things like we talked about earlier allows me to have a deeper understanding of why he was such a key role. Um, so Josephus, as I've been dubbed, um, was part of a group of rabbinical shepherds, and I think Harry explained this earlier to you. Um, but the cave where Jesus was born, and it wasn't a wooden stable, um, where Jesus was born was where us rabbinical shepherds would take the sheep when they were going to be sacrificed. And so when it was laid down in the manger, it would be the same sort of manger that the sacrificial lambs would have been laid in too. And so the symbolism between them both is truly extraordinary. Learning about the relentless hearts of all the parts has been amazing. Um, I've been, a perform been in a performance before called Relentless, um, where we learned about this. Um, and then doing it again with a twist now is incredible and just expands the knowledge of it all so much. So, yes, it's, it's in a more, it's in a better, what am I saying? It's an amazing performance um, and audio drama. So, yes, come out and see your tour by it. As the shepherd, <laughs> as playing the shepherd, could you kind of give a, a little bit of um, knowledge as to why the shepherd would have had a relentless heart. I mean, let's just think about this. This is one of the shepherds that was visited by the heavenly hosts of angels <laughs> that told him to go make haste and to go to Bethlehem. So the immediate thing there is, did he obey immediately? And what can we learn from that? Because delayed obedience is disobedience. Mm -hmm. And when God asks us to do something, we often question or want to weigh it up in our minds. But something that's so obvious within the Christmas story is all the people that are featured, mm -hmm. there was not a delay in their obedience. Well, everyone except Zachariah. This is true. Um, and to be honest, I was studying him recently, listening to some awesome messages about Zachariah specifically. Um, and he's been a really interesting character to me because um, studying up on it, you know, we see that both Mary and Zachariah asked a question after the angel arrived. So why was Zachariah struck dumb and Mary, you know, not, if you know what I mean? Um, and so looking into that, um, I heard Jeremy Pearson say yesterday, he was talking about um, how Zachariah should have known better um, as a priest and as someone in this sort of um, position because he studied the scriptures um, and he knew, you know, just like Jeremiah 32, 27 says that there is nothing that God, that God cannot do. Um, and when the angel came to him, you know, and said to him, you know, this will all happen. He was like, what and how can I believe this? He was looking for evidence um, and all God required of him was faith. Um, and we know now that faith is the evidence of things unseen. Um, and so if he just had faith, that should have been enough evidence for him already that God said it. Um, whereas Mary was willing to do it, but she just needed to know how. 
And so there was a big difference between their two responses when you really study it. Um, and I think looking at all the parts in the Christmas story is really interesting. Um, but seeing that, you know, that difference between those two and the belief that Mary had and the unbelief that Zachariah had um, is pretty incredible. And with regards to the shepherd that that God obviously visited them on their you think about this from a livelihood point of view, if we bring it up to date, you know, if we look at it as it's reflected in our musical, um, you know, this is a guy, bring it into the here and the now. He's mm-hmm. busy. He's, you know, he's at, about his livelihood. His livelihood is around him and actually leaving the flock to go and to obey God mm-hmm. would have been risking mm-hmm. his livelihood happening, you mm-hmm. know. Um, he's he's there, he's busy. How many of us would have left stuff that we treasured that was our bread and butter, mm-hmm. you know, to obey God? Would we have trusted him enough to look after the things that we owned, you know, the the, the, the sheep in this in this case, but would we have obeyed God immediately? Or like when Jesus said in, in the Gospels, you know, follow me, and it's like, oh, let me just do this and yeah. let me just do that. You notice that in the case of the shepherd that you're playing, it said they went with haste. Mm-hmm. So they didn't, you know, put their sheep under somebody else. They didn't, you know, organize how this would work, who would feed them in the morning. They just left and went. You know, so this shepherd had a relentless heart to obey God and to go and see the Messiah, Mm. regardless of the fact that he could have lost his livelihood. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Looking at that specifically, you know, thinking about his livelihood and his job, you know, being rabbinical shepherds, they had to have such high attention on those shepherds because they were sacrificial on those shepherds, on on those lambs, on those sheep. Um, (laughs) They had to have such high attention because they were the sacrificial lambs and the law of Moses and everything, you know, that told about how spotless they had to be. And so for them just to drop it and leave it um, was a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Mm -hmm. haste. Um, So that... Sorry to interrupt you. There was some other form of symbolism symbolism as well, wasn't there, with regards to the sheep and being in the cave. And what what, what, what else was in... What else was in the cave? I'm being forced to eat the microphone. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's right. So the swaddling clothes um, where... Uh, Mary wrapped up Jesus in um, was the same swaddling clothes they would have put around the sacrificial lambs. And so, you know, just to get back to their dedication, just to go with haste, um, really shows us a life lesson that when God speaks, don't delay. Yeah. You know, when God speaks, um, just follow after it because the don't fact of the matter it. is, if God says it, then it will happen. Mm. Um, and it doesn't take our forcing anything to happen to make it happen because God's word is enough and our faith in it is enough. So mm. yeah. something also that we um we learnt very briefly was about when the wise men came and I will leave it up to you to find out when they actually visited Mary and were they actually at the birth or were they later visitors? Um I'll leave that for you to find out with Rick Renner. <laughs> but the gifts that they brought specifically to Jesus, the frankincense, gold and myrrh, would have been enough in that time and age to support Jesus throughout his entire life. It's like almost giving a child an inheritance at birth mm. um, and being that put away in a savings account and knowing that that's there for their education, their first car, their college fund, you know, to set them up for their wedding. Um, that kind of gifts were of such calibre that they actually set Jesus up for the rest of his life and it wasn't three was it no and it wasn't three wise men but we'll leave them to listen to rick renner to find out more about that so the other characters quickly that we have in relentless are joseph and that is played by our son noah so noah yes my first time on stage in about seven years (laughs) and i'll be darting back and forth to the sound desk it is we have a a place on our script where we said dad is on sound desk yikes so So please please be praying in advance (laughs) Like go to prayer and fasting. And I'm sure he will do an amazing, <laughs> amazing job. He just needs some training. Call from the Noah. prayer line. <laughs> he has a good trainer on his on his you case. Know I'm very quiet at this point. Well, on his case. Um, so yes, so Noah, with regards to Joseph, what do you think as a young man yourself? I'll get it. Um, there's no, someone at the door. As a young man, as a young dogs. man yourself. If, you know, obviously not having 
not having a girlfriend. But if you did, looking at some of the young couples that you have recently done weddings for and stuff like that, can you imagine put yourself into the groom's position if he was already and excited? You, like Noah and Ari have just photographed a beautiful wedding of a young couple. And we know how excited that young couple were mm. in the run-up to their wedding um, and getting to know the groom-to-be. Can you imagine what he would have felt like if he'd have found out that actually his bride-to-be was expecting? And then she turns around and she says, this is all of God. You know, would you have had those kinds of, you know, just that kind of submission to God's plan? Or do you think as a young man, you would have questioned in your natural being? I think, um, well, I've never not been, I have, well, I'm single. I haven't got any experience in this. Um, I think if I was in that situation, I'm thinking about, um, having been around a wedding recently and shot an engagement shoot, um, and seeing the the joy and the the passion and the excitement that the that the happy couple had on their face on their wedding day, um, and and everything in between, I think the guy probably would have been absolutely distraught. Yeah. Um, and I think for her to turn around and have the audacity to say it's of God. <laughs> Um, I would question her sanity um, personally, but that, that's my take. Um, so I, I imagine the culture was a lot stricter than now. It was more stricter, but I imagine maybe it was more open to God doing things of that magnitude because that was more common to a, de- to a degree. Well, I don't, I don't um, so this but, was coming. This was like the first acclaimed major sign of God after the silent years <clears throat> there was like so many hundred years between um the last book of the old testament is that micah, micah? I, I, I think micah? what i'm trying to say is it wouldn't Malachi. it wouldn't be out of the question for joseph because they had the torah because of everything yeah. that, they, that they learned and the, de- yeah. the dedication they had to it in their lives which is something we can take a lot from in our modern day lives and their dedication to the word so so on that basis do you think joseph's strength came from his dedication to the word because it says obviously an angel visited joseph and gave him the reassurance mm. he needed but that young man must have gone through hell from the moment of seeing his beautiful betrothed that just come back from elizabeth to seeing that she was pregnant, mm. excited about the wedding, and suddenly he's struck with this, do I believe her or do I not believe her? And we often forget that this young man, or however old he was, had as just a relentless heart as mm-hmm. Mary in this mm-hmm. because he'd have had to have gone against That's culture. Right. Yeah. Right. He would have had to, you know, it says in the word that he wrestled to put her away privately mm-hmm. so as not to get her stoned to death. But So we can take from that Je- Joseph was a very gentle man Absolutely. and he walked in a lot of character, um, which is why potentially I think he, if you, if you look at the time between Mary telling him and him having the dream, there was time. He didn't fly off the handle. He didn't immediately ditch her on the spot. Um, you know, he took time to think about it. So he wasn't um, having a knee jerk reaction, which I think speaks to his character and the the way he'd been brought up and the way his culture was, and which I think helped. However, had he not had an angel visitation, I don't know if he would have still married her but then we can see here again a a thing that's waved throughout relentless is that with an instruction that god gives Mm -hmm. he will always give a reassurance Mm -hmm. or you know he will with uh, one of the lines is with the plan always comes a promise yeah you know and god is not about to tell us to do something without giving us some reassurance um some confirmation or some um provision but sometimes the provision isn't until we actually step out and start the doing um is in the place where we're going yeah. or or the step that we're going to take and god is just waiting for our yes mm. so you know god loved joseph and and he sent that reassurance just like yeah. he loved mary and sent the reassurance of her cousin elizabeth so she could mm-hmm. go and get the reassurance there so noah from the perspective of We've just talked about the the, the shepherd. Yeah. Um, his relentless heart was to do with the fact that he had to um, jeopardize potentially his income, his livelihood, mm-hmm. the rabbinical mm-hmm. um, sheep, and all the shepherds that Noah Oscar was talking about. From Joseph's point of view, mm-hmm. what would you say his relentlessness was, um, and 
where did he find his strength from? Was it through his upbringing and his understanding of the word? What would you say? So if you look at what Rick Renner taught, um, if you go and watch those episodes, um, you will find out that Joseph wasn't a poor, lowly carpenter. Um, in those days, they had what they called tectons, which were what we would now call master craftsmen. Um, so they were sought after all over the district, for lack of a better word. Um, and they would they would be specialists in creating um, fine, ornate um, woodwork, stonework, um, particularly out of things like marble and, and, mm-hmm. and special materials. So Joseph, especially in that culture, I think, choosing to believe Mary would be risking his reputation, um, which he'd probably worked very hard for to obtain such a high um, reputation in that culture, particularly in the line of work that he had. If you think about that culture particularly, they showed their greatness by the buildings that they built, um, by how decorative they were. Um, if you look into the history of Herod the Great, the buildings that he built were some of the most um, extravagant in the area because he wanted people to remember him by the buildings that he built and things like that. So the position that Joseph had as a tecton um, would have been a very well paid, a very well sought out, a very highly sought after position. So Joseph had all that to lose. Um, not to mention the comments of the community and the culture around him um, who may not believe the God card and would think that maybe Joseph hadn't waited till the wedding night um, and he would have all the shame to bear of that from not only his family but this guy probably had friends and culture surrounding him yeah, that would have looked very badly Mary upon that. Mary taken the brunt of that more than he would because they'd looked at her. Well, it would depend if they included Joseph in the betrayal, I guess. Yeah. They were, you know, the, the most obvious suspect would have been her betrothed. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know, we are clearly learning lots and deepening our understanding of not just the Christmas story, but the hearts and lives behind it that have been touched. And next time we will get to talk to Mary. And but Elizabeth. Before we go. Who is you, Mum? Oh, yes, and Elizabeth and, and Zechariah. Zechariah and Simeon. And, Simeon and, and the innkeeper, which is you. And, now, and then we'll talk to Eli, who is also playing a little cameo role, aren't you? Doesn't have any lines, no. but you're, you're going to appear at some point. And before we go, let me pose a question to the listening audience. A very Christmassy themed one, including shepherds, since this is what we've been talking about. If Jesus is the Lamb of God and Mary was the mother of Jesus, oh, no. does this mean that Mary had a little lamb? Oh, dear. <laughs> 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 I'd say I couldn't help it. We yes. have, we have. These. I said that one at the table the other day to be met with a, a an abundance of groans. Oh, <laughs> so. I'm sure. I'm sure. So yeah, we do encourage you just go and check out um at once again the Rick Renner episodes. Dig deep because there is so much in the original mm-hmm. Hebrew mm-hmm. and Greek that we miss mm-hmm. as modern Western world churches. Um, it is really fascinating to find out these things. So he explains about the church and the nativity, where yep. it is, how it got there, uh, and far far more. It, it is well worth listening to. It really is. So we're going to leave you with um, Oscar's going to just pray you out and pray that you too this Christmas season. I know it sounds crazy, but we are nearly in November um, as we run up to Christmas, as we start the Advent Sundays, that God will really just encourage your hearts to dig deeper. Don't just accept what we have been told and we have grown up and learned there is so much more to this Christmas story. And as a family, you know, we're not perfect. We're not we're not wholly there yet, but we're really learning that some of the stuff that we have included in our Christmases maybe is a little out of balance um, and that with the depth of the understanding of this story, it has put a whole new twist on where our focus would be. So I'm just going to leave you with Oscar. Yeah. Father God, we just thank you so much for today's podcast. Lord Jesus, we just, we just want to thank you for... Uh, everything you've done uh, in our lives through just just reading through this performance, Father God, and being part of the script. So, Lord Jesus, we just we just pray right now, Lord God, also for the listening audience. Lord God, we pray that if they were to come to the performance or to listen to the audio drama or even just to listen to this podcast, Lord God, that you would reveal to them the relentless heart of all the people in the Christmas story. Lord Jesus, we know that the people in that story um, went through so much to bring your story to the earth. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to have the same relentless hearts and tenacity, Lord God, to just fulfill the call of God in our lives. Father God, to have the posture of be it unto me according to your word. No matter what happens, Father God, you help us to have faith in you that if you said it, it will be accomplished. And so, Lord Jesus, 
We just pray you give us a relentless heart of the shepherd, Father God, to drop everything and to go and to go and chase after what you've called us to do, Father God, to give us the relentless heart of Mary, Lord God, just to be ready to submit to your will. Give us the relentless heart of Joseph to trust you even in the, even in the, even, even in the, even amongst difficult circumstances, Father God, and things we don't understand. And Lord Jesus, we just pray that you would do this, Father, and reveal to people the meaning and the true meaning behind the Christmas story and the amazingness of Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And with that, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Crick House. Um, it is such a blessing to us to know that people listen and that you enjoy it. We love reading your comments and um, your testimonies and prayer points that you send in for us. Um, so keep those coming in. It always encourages us. And we also love to pray with you and for things in your life as well. So don't forget to visit our website at www.manatheatrecompany.uk. That's where you can get in touch with us. You can find more of our audio dramas and indeed where you'll be able to find the Relentless Legacies audio drama when that releases in a week or two's time. All right. Amazing. So from all of us at the Crick House, it is a big goodbye. goodbye.